repeat for over 20 years straight. That's the way you become an expert. Wingstop, the wing experts. The Eurozone may be headed into the danger zone over Greece and, of course, its bailout. That is according to the British, British Chancellor of... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me, the British Chancellor. In an ex exclusive interview, George Osborne spoke with Bloomberg TV. Well, it's clear that the risks to the world economy, the risks to the British economy of this standoff between the Eurozone and Greece is growing each day. And I think the risks of a miscalculation or a misstep leading to a very bad outcome is growing as well. European finance ministers meet tomorrow over how much money to lend Greece. The big issue, will Greece's new government live up to terms of the bailout? So let's bring in from London, UBS's chief economist for Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Reinhard Kloos. Reinhard, what do you make of this? It seems like we're not actually paying enough attention to Greece possibly leaving the euro. How serious is it? Now, we think it's indeed a, a risk that might be underestimated in the global markets right now, but we still see good room for a compromise to evolve over the next couple of weeks, a compromise that would most likely involve lower interest rates on Greece's bailout loans, longer maturities on these loans, and probably somewhat greater fiscal flexibility for Greece in the form of a lower primary surplus target. But these negotiations are likely to be quite difficult. It seems that there's a tremendous amount of posturing on that. Do you feel that the Greek policy, you know, that, that the way the, uh, uh, you know, Tsipras and the finance well, the minister have been, have been proceeding, do you think it's helping their case to show how firm they are and attempt to stake it out? Or do you actually think that this is going to be driving them further apart and increasing the chances of something that no one wants ha to happen actually happen? They don't want to turn this into a manhood exercise with her, uh, Frau Merkel. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's right. This might be part of the normal negotiation process. I mean, there's a great deal of posturing, as you rightly say. And one of, um, one of the risks of that might be that it will, um, you know, essentially increase the political hurdles for Ms. Merkel to make a compromise here. And yet, as I said earlier, I think a compromise still looks likely because also the, the opponents of Greece on the other side, the more hawkish nations in Europe, um, would like to avoid Greece leaving the Eurozone. Well, when it comes to negotiations, what exactly do you think Chancellor Merkel will let Greece, I hate to say it, but get away with? Yeah, as I said earlier, I think um, lower interest rates, longer maturities on the bailout loans, somewhat greater fiscal flexibility is quite likely. I think the red line would be an outright cut in the notional values of the debt, so haircuts, and a major rolling back of structural reforms. I think this is a key issue. I mean, it's one thing to grant further financial support to Greece, but it's a different thing to see that the new government make, makes a major retreat from the path of structural reforms, which the Germans and their allies in Europe regard as crucial, that the structural improvement in Greece improve, I mean, continues so that eventually there's light at the end of the tunnel. Is it a surprise to you that Greek stocks are doing so well today? Well, I mean, we've seen news that the European Commission is making a compromise proposal. Uh, but I think the, the path of negotiation will still be long. As I said, eventually I think both sides have great incentives to step towards each other. Uh, and I think, I mean, we'll, we'll have a better idea over the course of this week. As you rightly said earlier, I mean, the finance minister meet tomorrow, the heads of state and government meet on Thursday. So what I would like to see uh, evolve from these meetings is, first of all, a framework for the negotiations to take place over the next couple of weeks and then also importantly signs of goodwill. You know, Podemos in Spain uh, didn't exist in July 2014. They're now filling the squares with this populist left wing. We don't have to pay this back. They're pushing us back. We look at the Greeks. They want to increase the minimum wages. They want to increase uh, the pensions from 750 euros to 1,000 in two years. It's a tremendous laundry list of anti-structural reforms with some proper structural reforms on the tax side, i.e. collecting some of them for fun. That's an easy thing to say effectively, make the rich pay and we're just going to keep going down the same way we have for the populace. My question is, you know, my thoughts on that would be, how much concern do you think that the Germans have in the back of their mind that what we've seen is left-wing populism picking up in the weak states? Spain has got it, Italy it's growing, and Greece it's in power. 
is that is that not a big part of the reason why they might climb down? Yeah, I think it's it's obvious that what is at stake goes well beyond Greece. Uh, as you rightly said, it's an issue in Portugal, in Spain, in Cyprus as well, to to you know a more limited extent in Ireland. So the Germans and their allies know that whatever concessions have to be granted to Greece might be might have to be replicated elsewhere. Um, so this is likely to make the German government more cautious. But as I said, in the end, I think there is a great will still to find a workable solution for all involved. Who holds much of the Greek debt? There's something like 335 billion of bonds and loans outstanding. If we were to see Greece default, who would actually get hurt? Is it the ECB, European banks? Who's got all that debt? I mean, by now, more than 75% of Greece's debt is held by the official sector. That's above all the Europeans, the IMF, the ECB. And that means that nowadays, should Greece leave the Eurozone, the damage would arguably be less than it would have been in 2011 and 2012 at a time when a larger share of the Greek debt was held by the private sector. You know. It would seem to me, though, that they still have some tremendous structural issues, you know, on the tax side. Do you think that they're going to do anything about increasing the dismal rate of, uh, of, of revenue growth from at least legitimate uh, sources of taxes? I'm thinking of the Lagrande list, 2,000 names of people with $2.8 billion that they've hidden at HSBC. They send it to the hidden. Greek government. The, actually, right up now on trial is the former finance minister who's acted on it immediately and appropriately by taking great efforts to strike all of his family members' names off the list. That's how he dealt with this tax issue, was by hiding his own family members on the list. And you sit there and go, you know, I can see why, why, why the Greeks would be sitting there saying, you know, everyone has to pay. But I can also see why the Germans would want to see that structural reform. It may be something that they can agree on. No, I think so too. I mean, the, in, its, in its government declaration, the new Greek government has said that they <laughs> want to go after some of the tax avoiders in Greece. And I think this is a legitimate aim. Um, so I think some parts of the structural reform program that the um, Syriza government has now proposed might be perfectly fine to, to agree on for everyone. It's just other issues of the structural reform program, such as hiring new uh, state employees, halting privatization, raising minimum wages, granting a 13th uh, pension payments. These are the steps that, from a you know, European perspective, go into the wrong direction. Is there a drop-dead date that we should have in mind where Greece will either simply be in or out? Well, I mean, we thought that the 28th of February would be a key date uh, because that is essentially a deadline that was set a couple of months ago by the uh, Eurogroup of Finance Ministers. And uh, the uh, Greek government has said over the last couple of days that it will not ask for an extension of this deadline. So this remains very important. But I would hope that out of the meetings that take place in Brussels this week, we get an agreement that this deadline will be uh, extended so that all sides gain more time to bring these difficult negotiations to a more fruitful conclusion. All right. Well, thank you for giving us your thoughts this morning. Reinhard Kloos, UBS's chief economist for Europe.